Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about how to find an equation of the plane that's passing through two given points and also perpendicular to a given plane. Okay, so to do the problem, we usually just do like a sketch of the whole situation. We don't need to worry about sketching really accurately where the points are in the space and what this plane looks like. We don't need to worry about any of those things. We just want to look at the whole situation so that we know what to do, like what kind of information that we need to find first in order to determine the equation of the plane. Okay, so let's just start. First, we are going to just make like uh, two points, right? So just, just put the two points there. So what happened is that I'm just going to make a point here and then I'm going to make another point uh, right here. Okay, now what happened is that we are going to draw the plane that we are trying to determine here, right? So that plane must be passing through those two points right here. So that means we are going to just make the plane that's passing through those two points. So this is the plane that we're trying to determine here. Okay, so... So let's say this is the plane that we want to find, right? So this one is the one that we want to find. Okay, so we want to find this one. And then now what about the given plane that's perpendicular to the plane that we try to find right here? Um, <clears throat> What happened is that we can uh, we can just make a plane that's perpendicular to this one. So simply we can we can say that. Okay, so yeah, so like that. So all the um, the objects that we are drawing in blue are given, right? So this one is this 3x plus y minus z is equal to 2, and then the two blue dots represent those two points. And so now the question is, how do we find this one that we are drawing in white? And then you may say, how do we, how do we find this? Um, so just remember that when we try to find an equation of the plane, we need two things. One is a point that lies in the plane. We actually have more than enough. We have two points, okay? That's, that's, that's done, right? That part is ready. Now, the other thing that we need is usually the part that you need to do some calculation. Um, that's the normal vector of the plane. So that's a vector that's actually perpendicular to the plane, right? So this is our normal vector that we're trying to find right here. Okay, and then you may say, how do we find this one? Actually, let me uh, draw it at a different spot so that it's easier to see. So the normal vector is this one that we're trying to find here. So you know that it forms a 90 degree angle with the plane. Is that okay? So now the question is, how do we find this? Usually we would need to take the cross product of two vectors that's lying in the plane that we're trying to determine. And then once we cross them, then we can find this normal vector. And so the way that we do this is that we need to find two vectors that lies in the plane, right? So uh, one of them, it's actually, you can find it really easily, which is uh, this one right here. Okay, so all you need to do is that because we already know two points in the plane, so what happens is that we can just make a vector from there, and we call this one v1, for example. Okay, so we already have a vector in this plane. Now the question is, how do you find another vector that also lies in this plane, and then we can cross the v1 and the other vector, right? Now the question is, how do we find it? Well, the idea is simple. So you know that our um, the plane that we're trying to determine is perpendicular to this given plane here, 3x plus y minus z is equal to 2. That's actually this blue plane that we're drawing right here. And if we look at its normal vector, okay, if we look, look at its normal vector, what happens is that, actually, let me just use screen for the normal vector for this one. You know that it's the normal vector for that plane is perpendicular to the plane, right? And so if we put it right here, and you know that it's perpendicular, and do you see what's going on here? This one is the V2. Do you see what's going on? This vector, you can think of it as lying in the plane that we're trying to determine. So now we have the V1, which lies in our plane, determined by those two given points. And then the green vector V2, 
that vector, it's the normal vector of the plane that's given to us. And because the plane that we're trying to determine is perpendicular to this given plane here, that means its normal vector is, we can think of it as lying in the plane that we're trying to determine here. So now our plane has two vectors that it contains. And so all we need to do is to take the cross product of those two vectors, and then we can find our normal vector n. Okay, so we already figured out what to do, and then now we are going to just carry out the whole process. Okay, so first we need to figure out this v1, right? So v1, okay, v1 is given by what? v1 is given by uh, forming a vector between those two points. Doesn't matter which one you use the, as the head or the tail, right? So we just take the, uh, let's say we take the first point, subtracting the second point, and that will work. So we are going to get four minus uh, one, right? Yes, we take the x component minus the x component. So four minus one, and then negative two minus one, right? So negative two minus one, and then one minus zero. So you get one minus zero here. And then, so what do we get here? We are gonna get three, negative three, and then positive one. So we get our V1. And then now we also need to figure out the green vector. The green vector is actually easy. We can just read it from this equation right here. So it should be really simple. Remember V2 is actually the normal vector of the plane that's given to us, right? So what is the normal vector? By just reading the coefficient of x, y, z, right? We have the normal vector, which is um, three and then one. And then the coefficient of z is negative one. So we just get three, one, and negative one, right? The three. And then the coefficient of the y is one. And then the coefficient of the z is negative one. So we get the vector. And so now what? Now we can find the normal vector because we already have two vectors that we found that's lying in the plane that we're trying to determine here. So let's take the, the, uh, the cross product of those two vectors. So the n. This is given by v1 cross v2. Okay, so we have the v1 and then um, cross v2, right? That's the multiplication symbol right here. And then that's the v2. Okay, and then what do we get here? We are going to form a 3 by 3 determinant. Actually, let me use the bar right here to make it look nicer. Okay, so we have the i and then the j and then the k, right? So what do we get here? The v1 must be put first, right? So when you put the, uh, the cross product is actually not cumulative. So whatever that you put first must be put in the second row when you set up the three by three determinant. So that, what is that? That's three, negative three and one. So we just put that here. Three, negative three and one. And then the green vector, right? So we have three, one, negative one. Okay, so now let's take the cross product. So when we are taking the cross product, you know how to take the cross product, right? You are going to just cross out the first row, cross out the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the first column, and then we are going to get this two by two matrix right here, right? So you are just going to be getting negative three, one, and then one, negative one, right? That's a two by two determinant. And then multiply by the i, right? So that's our um, our first component, our x component for the normal vector. And then now continue with the minus. Okay, and then so uh, cross out the second, uh, the first row, and then the second column. So we get three one three negative like one. So we get three one three negative like one. Is that okay? And then plus. And then the last one, the last one is crossing out the first row and then the third column. So we get three, like the three, three and one. So we just get three, like the three, and then three and one, right? Okay, so we are actually ready to do the calculation right here. So continue doing the calculation. What do we get here for the first component? For the first component, it's just 
uh, like the three times like the one, we get positive three. And then minus one, right? So minus one. Okay, so, so far so good. And then this one, there was a minus sign in the front, so don't forget, right? So it's really important that you don't forget this one, right? Don't forget. Okay, and then there was a minus sign right here. And then what do we have here? This is three times negative one, that's negative three. And then minus three, so we get minus three right here. And then three times one, so we get just the three. Oh, actually, we don't need parentheses, so just the three. And then minus three times like the three, so like the nine, right? Minus like the nine. And then now just continue with the calculation. That's a two. That's this is what this is negative six with the minus sign in the front, so we get positive six. And then we get twelve. Right, so that's our normal vector for the plane that we are trying to determine here. Then you may say, what's next? Um, well, basically, we are done, right? Because we already have the normal vector. We also have a point. Actually, we have more than enough points that lies in the plane. So we are basically done. All we need to do is to write down the equation. Then we are finished. OK, so how do we write down the equation? Um, let's just pick this point because this point looks easier to work with than that point, right? So let's just pick the 1, 1, 0. And by the way, if you pick the other point, you are going to get the same answer. Um, when you put it in the equation form, it will look different. But after you simplify, you can turn one into the other. So you are going to get the same answer. So it doesn't matter which point that you pick as long as the point lies in the plane that you are you are trying to find. OK, so right now I'm just going to use this point. I'm going to use the normal vector and then we can write down the equation. So the equation. OK, so the equation. The equation looks like what the equation is going to be. Um, let's put down the normal vector right here. So we are going to get what is that? That's two and then x minus now x minus what x minus the x value at this point so you just get x minus one okay plus six okay so this where does the six come from the six comes from the y component of the normal vector right so six and then times y minus the y value of the point that we're using so y minus one and then plus 12 Okay, 12 times what the z, right? Z minus what the z value of the point. So z minus zero. And then all that is equal to zero. So we have the plane equation. This is the, that's the equation that we want. If you want to simplify it, you can, right? So we can simply just, we can just do what? If you want to simplify, or you can just leave it in this form. It depends on the, uh, the instruction of the problem or your your uh, your teacher's expectation of what your answers should look like. So regarding that, you will need to uh, ask your your teacher or uh, look at the instruction or you got to decide. Right. So um, right now, I still would just show you how to simplify it. But this is really just basic algebra here. So you distribute, distribute, distribute. Right. So we are going to get 2x minus 2 plus 6y minus 6 plus 12z is equal to 0. OK, so what happens now? Um, we can move those constants to the other side of the equation so that we get the minus 2 minus 6 move to the other side, positive 8. OK, so our equation will become 2x plus 6y plus 12z, OK? is equal to 8. And you can see that all those coefficients with the constant are even numbers. What we can do is that we can simplify the equation further by dividing everything by 2. OK, so if you divide everything by 2, then you're going to get x plus 3y plus uh, 6z. Is that OK? And then you get that to be equal to 4. And so that's our final answer right here. Yeah, so this is the final answer that we want. If you want to, if you want to have the most simplified uh, answer, right? So that's that's the one. If you want to write z as a function x and y, you can do that. If then you can just solve a z here, but it's it's up to you. So that part is really just all uh, extra work 
in algebra. There is no calculus involved in that. Actually, there is no calculus involved in this problem anyway, right? Um, but you usually will see this kind of problem in calculus three. Um, so you may have a concern like why this one looks different from that one. Would that be okay to simplify? Uh, it's okay because when you are graphing them, you are going to get the same answer. And actually, uh, you're going to get the same plane. You're going to get the same graph if you are graphing the plane. Okay. Uh, what happened is this. The answer, the look of the answer is not unique for an equation of the plane. Um, it's really because you can multiply the uh, the whole equation by any non-zero real number, and you are still going to get the same plane right here. That means, as you can see, this equation, all the coefficients and the constant is are really just um, multiples of those numbers, the coefficients and the constant. So using this equation, you can actually turn into a different loop and it will still give you the same graph. What that means is that you can multiply each coefficient and also the constant by any non-zero real number. Like you can even do it like pi, right? So you can do pi x plus three pi y plus six pi z is equal to four pi. You are still going to get the same plane, okay? So this is really just one look that looks the, the simplest. Okay, so that's it for this problem. We'll do more problems like this next time. They are going to just get more and more complicated. To help make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe to my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. I want to work together with you to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.